So hi guys, uh, in this video I want to, to show you how to, to repair your uh, Nespresso machine, either it is a Inicia or other model, in case the, the buttons are flashing uh, twice a second, so really rapidly like this, and uh, the, the intensity of the light diminishes, so it's really low. In this case, you have a faulty capacitor on the main board and um, I will show you right now how to, to change that uh, capacitor. Okay. So to disassemble this, it's quite easy. I've done it in, in uh, several other um, videos. First of all, you need the pry tool. To do this for the cover then there are some uh, screws for each screw uh, you need a, a torx bit a star in my case it, it's a t20 here first of all the handle has to be removed like this keep it on the side because you will still need it then with the pry tool you have to pry it from the uh, bottom first Be careful, this has to be in the locked position, otherwise you cannot remove the sides, so... Like this, and then remove it. And now you see it's on the correct way. Just wiggle it a little bit, and it will eventually come out and the same should be done on the other side Okay, we will put them aside. Then we have to remove the power cable. this there's the ground this is really oxidated here so we will have to clean this oh my god so so much oxidation here
then the main and the line has to be removed from the main board. You can either wiggle it a little bit around or you can open this just Good, cable out. Then you have to remove this cover here for the water tank. This again, it's a little bit stubborn. All these plastics are really hard plastics. So try from this side. Don't worry if you break some tabs, it will still will still work like this okay and then comes I think the most complicated part to separate this this is always a hassle because it's really uh, clipped on with a lot of tabs you have to start from from this side here this and now you have opened the first tab here try putting something in here just to not close it again and then work your way on this side. Please be careful on this side. It will, if you scratch this, it will see that you opened it. It's not nice. Just again, work your way up the unit like this. So it's coming, coming out here a little bit okay more and more then up here again there are some tabs here try to separate them like this and now I think we can remove this cover here let's open it And that's it. You have this part out. Here is the brewing mechanism and the heater connected to the main board here. We will need to work on this main board. So, yeah. For this to happen, I will remove this brewing mechanism as if you saw my uh, videos you see that I'm always removing this and clean the entire uh, front part because uh, coffee is getting clogged inside here and then uh, water will spill uh, out of the brewing mechanism. So if I'm always going this far to, to work on, the, on a unit, I'm always cleaning the, the front part. So in order to do this again, we have to close this or lock it to be more precise 
get this part out. You see here is a sliding part here. This has to slide out somehow. So I'm introducing a, a screwdriver here and just a little bit. Ah, don't forget about this part. You cannot remove this without removing this part. So just grab it, pull it, and then pull it down. Forgot about it. So this has to be. And then you can lock this in place again. This. And now you can slide it out. Like this. See? Then we have here to remove this bearing arm and also the other bearing arm. So in order to do this you have to compress it and then remove the first one. Then it will be a little bit complicated to show you but it's the same process from the other side. <coughs> like this. And now just remove and slide up and the entire brewing mechanism is out. You can clean it afterwards. Good. And now we have this part. We can fully get it out from the unit like this together with the pump. Okay, next step. Let's clean a little bit our workspace. Electronics and waters, water are not friends, so we won't, don't want to have water all over. Good. And here we have access to the to the main board. As you can see. We have a little bit of oxidation here. This is not, not something that we want to see. But nevertheless, also we have some, I don't know if you can see, we have some oxidation on this cup, coupling here or connectors. We will clean them, no problem, with some isopropyl alcohol. But first, let's disconnect. Good. So, looks like for this units it's uh, 100 microfarad so this is interesting let's see if we have this type of uh, of capacitor okay so i managed to to remove the the capacitor as i said this is a uh, 100 uh, nano farad capacitor at um, 310 uh, volts as i see managed to find a replacement exactly 100 uh, uh, nano but uh, this is at uh, 275 volts uh, i think it's uh, it's okay it will it will work so after measuring this of course we have to to take in consideration the the tolerance of the of the the device hope, hope you can see here 
so the capacitor that we will put in will have 94 93.8 nano so more or less almost almost 100 and uh, the old one let's measure it also this is, has 73.2 so way lower than the specs let's see uh, if by changing to this one it will uh, repair the fault so I will uh, solder this uh, off camera and uh, come back uh, after everything is done uh, and I will also clean this off camera uh, and then uh, for the reassemble uh, we will uh, yeah film again okay okay guys so we're back I have uh, soldered the, the capacitor here also cleaned all this uh, you see the the coffee and the, the nozzle here everything is cleaned and um, yeah we only have to clean a little bit the this um, main board for for uh, um, yeah rust and um, and dirt so we will spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and just clean it with some with a toothbrush this way we will remove also the the residue of flux I noticed that that the this um, cables are a little bit sticky, so I will also put some alcohol here and clean them. I don't know how they got like this, so sticky. But some alcohol would never do harm to electronics. Here is clean. Good. Let's take a cotton swab and clean the contacts here. Like this. And clean also the connectors. like a lot of oxidation here I don't know what what happened to this okay And I think now we can put everything back together.
let's also clean this part here because afterwards we will not have access to it I think we're fine like this And good. So first of all, let's reconnect this back here, like this, and then put it also this connector. Good thing I remember about it. like this and now we can clip everything in place because we have to tuck here everything back here like this and then we can snap everything back in place. Hopefully it will snap back in place. Like this. clicked that's good then we have to connect this connector here now that we uh, clean these terminals we are sure that it makes a good connection and I think we can reinstall everything back let's see if we have some plugged pinholes here It is. Looks like all these holes are, are clear and now we can insert back this mechanism like this, snaps in place. Good. Now we can insert back these bearings. force it a little bit then this side and then on the other side like 
this and now we can insert it back in the his location buttons back here it has to, to slide back into the specific location so be careful that this happens also the pump here has the rubber dumper has to go to this uh, area here so we also have to take care of that so you can see what I'm doing here this and then this spring has to be compressed uh, insert it all the way here and now we have this in place this part has to go here like this so I think everything is in place we have to insert this hopefully this has to be done before not at this point but nevertheless we can manage it also at this point and also the outer cover can be inserted and it has to click like this good I think at, at this point we can test it. Let's see if we did if we did something correct at least. So ground line and main and Let's see if something explodes. Good, good so far. So yeah, finally stopped blinking after one second after stopping this video. So now we have two solid uh, buttons, so short copy. And also long. Okay, so as you saw, let's summarize. In case your buttons are blinking intermittently, then change the capacitor. It's, it looks like the capacitor is out of spec and you have to, to change it. Also, if one of the buttons is working and the other one is not working, then this is the problem. In case it's blinking continuously and uh, rapidly, then maybe first of all try to to descale it. If it's only a descaling, 
keep the, the two buttons pressed. If it works afterwards, then don't need to get all this hassle. If it doesn't work, then again, change the capacitor. So I hope you, you enjoyed this video. If yes, give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any question, please, uh, please let me know. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.